So you have learned that a transaction is a group of SQL statements that represent a single unit of work. In this lecture, we're going to create a transaction to store an order with an item. Now, before getting started, let's restore our databases so we work with the same data set and there are no surprises later in this section. So here is the script for recreating our databases. I'm going to execute this script. Beautiful. Now, back to our query window. Let's use our SQL store database. To create a transaction, we use the start transaction statement. Now in this transaction, first we need to insert an order into the orders table. So insert into orders. In this table, we have a few required columns, customer ID, order date, and status. Now let's set the values. I'm going to use one for the customer ID, 2019, January 1st for the order date and one for the status. The values don't really matter. We just want to focus on this transaction. Next, we need to insert the order item. So insert into order items. All the columns in this table are required. So let's just pass all the values. For the order ID, I'm going to use the last insert ID function. As I told you before, this returns the ID of the newly inserted order. Then I'm going to pass one for the product ID, one for the quantity, and one for the price. Again, the values don't really matter. Now here we have a syntax error because I forgot to put a semicolon here. Let's also terminate this line with a semicolon. Beautiful. Now finally, we need to close this transaction using the commit statement. When MySQL sees this command, it will write all the changes to the database. If one of the changes fails, it will automatically undo the previous changes, and we say the transaction is rolled back. Let me show you. So I'm going to execute this transaction. All right. Now let's take a look at the orders table. First, we need to refresh this view. All right. Here's the SQL store database, and here's the orders table. So here's the new order that we created, order number 11. Also, let's take a look at the order items table. And this is the item for this order. All right, now let me simulate the scenario where this second statement is going to fail. So our transaction is going to get rolled back and the change made by the first statement is going to get undone automatically. Let me show you. So on the top, under the query menu, we have this command, execute current statement. With this command, we can execute our script line by line. Now look at the shortcut. On the Mac, it's command and enter. So I'm going to put the cursor on line three and press command and enter. Now this line is executed, so we have a new transaction. Then put the cursor on line five and execute this line as well. Beautiful. Now we're not going to execute line eight. Instead, we're going to disconnect from the server. So I'm going to close this. This simulates the scenario where the client disconnects from the server. This can happen for a number of reasons. Maybe the client crashes or the network goes offline or the server crashes. It doesn't matter. Now let's reconnect to the server and look at the data in the orders table. See what we have here. The last order is order number 11 that we successfully inserted earlier. So when we try to insert order number 12, our transaction didn't complete, it was rolled back. That is why we don't have that order here, okay? So most of the time, this is how we code a transaction. We have a start transaction statement on the top and a commit statement down the bottom. But there are situations that we may want to do some error checking and manually roll back a transaction. In those cases, instead of the commit statement, we use the rollback statement, rollback. So this will roll back the transaction and undo all the changes. Now, one more thing before we finish this lecture. MySQL wraps every single statement that we write inside a transaction, and then it will do a commit if that statement didn't return an error. So whenever we have an insert, update, or delete statement, MySQL wraps this inside a transaction, and then it will do a commit automatically. This is controlled using a system variable called auto commit. Let me show you. So. Let's show variables like auto commit. There you go. We have this variable auto commit, which is set to on by default. So whenever we execute a single statement, 
MySQL puts that statement in a transaction and commits it if the statement doesn't raise an error. 